Hello everyone, Adam here, and today I'll be talking about Journey to the Savage Planet from Typhoon Studios and published by 505 Games, explaining what happened during this incredible adventure, including who exactly the final boss is. If you want me to explain another game, please leave those requests in the comments below. Also like and subscribe as it does help me out a lot. So on to the video. Journey to the Savage Planet has you in control of an employee from Kindred Aerospace, the fourth best interstellar company who is seeking planets fit for human habitation. This is where you come in. As an employee of Kindred Aerospace, you're tasked with heading into this brand new world they've discovered called ARY-26. However, the company has only given you enough fuel to get to the planet, and not only that, you have to locate a local fuel source, but also scan the entire local ecosystem on the planet, or you might as well call this planet your new home. Helping you is an AI companion called the EKD, who will alert you to local hidden areas, viable items, and a clone yourself if you happen to die. The developers really had fun writing this game as the dialogue is full of clever jokes and car cartoonish animations, with the local wildlife looking like creatures from a Looney Tunes cartoon, shadowing the very dangerous situation you're in. Upon leaving the ship and crafting your blaster, you enter the first open area and across that is this giant alien structure confirming you're not the first explorer to set foot on this planet. Kindred CEO Martin Tweed, who communicates with you over the course of the adventure with videos, wants you to see what's inside that structure. This begins your long and quite intense journey of collecting known and unique resources across the planet to build new gear so you can survive longer and solve and complete the intricate puzzles and trials to open the structure. Also consuming large amounts of orange goo that happen to grow large tumors in your body to increase your health and stamina. I'm not kidding, that's literally what they do because that's what the AI says it's doing to your body. So, good news, bad news. Good news is those things you make make way harder to kill. Bad news is you're harder to kill because most of your bones have been placed with rock hard space tumors. Good news, potential partners dig tumors. Or so I hear. While also, you're completing optional experiments at scanning the wildlife. Remember, you're here to make sure the planet is suitable for humans. In addition, you'll come across alien logs from the previous alien explorer who found a structure and like you, try to get inside. You'll quickly notice that despite being a planet, these biomes are all separated into large chunks of rock that seem to be floating on air. And there's a reason for all of this that I'll get into later. When inside the structure, the protagonist finds that there's a lot of vats that house both the local plants and animals you've been finding throughout the planet. Heading deeper into the structure, you find a horrible mass of green goo called Teratoma. After defeating the creature, you get this shiny new device. Oh, and it eats you, but don't worry, you pass through its body with no issue, but I'm not going to say why because of fear of demonetization. Just watch what happens. So what's this device and why is this structure on this planet? Well, after grabbing all the alien logs, it turns out that the device you obtained was a planet builder. The aliens that came before you used this device to create their planet that you're standing on. Using the genetic information from another planet, I assume it's their home world, it could be a random planet. It never really explained, they created a replica of said planet, specifically ARY-26. But the planet was unstable and fractured, which is why all the biomes are separated into these large chunks of earth, but that's not all. The expedition logs you've been collecting are from the former explorer named Ranger Teratoma. Yes, the creature that you fought inside the structure, who is part of an alien race called the Zololoid. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, but it's pronounced Z-O-X-O-L-O-I-D. The explorer was tasked with finding noteworthy planets to understand the origins of the universe. 
like the protagonist, he found his way into the to this structure and got inside. In the logs, we find out that Teratoma removed his helmet while exploring the planet. Despite the air being breathable for his kind, the airborne bacteria was another story and it started to mutate his body and degrade his mind. After a long climb, Teratoma made it into the structure, but the mutations took a heavy toll. Unable to return to his ship, Teratoma went inside and found the device, which he called a seed, but his legs were destroyed and his entire body altered into the giant mass we fought at the bottom of the tower. His last logs highlight how Teratoma's mind just went and it just disappeared. He died mentally, but he was also extremely happy. Like his mind decayed to the point that he just didn't care anymore. So basically, an alien race attempted to replicate another planet, most likely their own, I'm going to assume, to create a second home for their species. We see these squid humanoid relief carbons and statues throughout the planet and in the alien transmissions which is likely what the creatures who made the seed look like. Their experiment was a failure and the planet completely broke apart. Teratoma found the planet and was infected with the alien bacteria that turned them into the mutant creature that we kill at the end of the game. So now we get to the true ending of the game. With everything scanned, a local fuel source secured, and the seed in hand, the only thing that's left is to head home and get your reward. When starting your ship and heading home, Martin sends you one final video. Turns out he knows what the seed is, most likely through the logs you've collected, and it's explaining to you not only did you complete your mission, but provide a way for Kindred to create planets. Which is not a good idea, all things considering. It also should be noted that the orange goo that you've been consuming throughout this adventure may lead to the protagonist turning into another mutant creature similar to Teratoma. While we don't know how the planet's bacteria would affect a human, we do know that living with so many tumors in your body isn't exactly good for your longevity, but who knows. And with that, we've come to the end of this and then explain. I really like Journey to the Savage Planet. It was a dark comedy style game that had a lot of creative elements. I did wish there were more unique encounters and the game didn't focus too heavily on collecting so many different items. But the incredible writing and strong level design had me hooked and even encouraged me to play the game three times more. So that's it for this and then explain. Please check out my other videos, I have two other ending explains for Mega Man Legends and Mega Man Legends 2. I've been really holding off on doing these videos because I've been streaming more extensively lately and focusing on reviews and video game content. But you know, things change and people requested this on my joint community which I would recommend you join just to support smaller YouTubers like myself. Anyway, what game would you like me to explain next? Let your voices be heard in the comments below. Also like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Stay awesome everyone.